This is Echo Canyon, uh, a corridor along Interstate 80, about halfway between Park City, Utah and Evanston, Wyoming. We can see the, the trucks and cars whizzing by there, the railroad. And this freeway passes a real scenic section of kind of reddish rock, especially on the north side. And we're gonna make the rock here sort of our, uh, our focus of today. Um, so we're gonna focus on these rocks here. This is a rock type called conglomerate. Conglomerate's a rock made out of gravel or larger sized particles of rock, usually somewhat rounded and kind of glued together. Uh, we're we're going to get look at this rock up closely. I've got a little sketch I'm going to show that explains how this rock formed. So let's get right to it and kind of look at this stuff. Um, so you can kind of see here along the, the trail, um, here's a good close-up look at the Echo Canyon conglomerate. Uh, a lot of particles of rock of different sizes, uh, but mainly sort of gravel-sized particles. Um, fairly rounded. You can see here the rock is a little bit more sandstone. And so these rocks formed in a river or stream environment. So as the rocks are being transported down the stream and they're colliding with each other, uh, they're chipping away the, the sharp corners and making the edges of the rock much more rounded. Uh, we can see a lot of different sizes and shapes in here. We call that poorly sorted when we see different uh, different shapes or shooting different sizes in the rock and then the relative sizes of the rocks tell us a little bit about um, the energy level of the streams that were transporting the rock so the bigger the particle is the more energy the stream had the more velocity the steeper the gradient that sort of thing uh, we'll get over here in a second to look at some of the bigger blocks but we can definitely see that this streams that were transporting these rocks were pretty high energy and we can see a pretty marked transition here from mostly gravel sized particles to mainly sand sized particles. And so there's definitely an energy change here from moving larger particles here, maybe during a flood, to moving mainly sand sized particles down here. So if we come up here and pass my lovely daughter Tessa, say hi everyone hi. Tessa. <laughs> um, let's take a quick regional look at what was going on here. And I drew a very lousy diagram but I'm hoping this is somewhat instructive. So these rocks come from the Cretaceous period, and we're looking at a period from about 80 to 100 million years ago. So our tectonic model at that time was we had subduction along the west coast of North America. This uh, plate here is called the Farallon Plate, and this ancient plate was diving beneath North America, subducting beneath it, creating magma that rose to the surface and fed volcanoes in Eastern California and in Nevada. If we move eastward into where we are here in Utah, the compression caused by these colliding plates produced a series of thrust faults. And these are terrible drawings, I apologize. But you can see the arrows here showing these faults which have kind of flat sections and ramps and flats. Basically, as the rocks are being squished here, that's causing the mountains to be uplifted. So this is a mountain building period called the severe orogeny. This is a mountain building event during the Cretaceous that produced a large mountain chain that extended from Canada to Mexico throughout Western North America. These mountains, of course, have been eroded since that time, but during the Cretaceous, these would have been a very lofty, uh, big mountain range, basically taking all these old rocks here and shoving them up over the top of themselves. Of course, as you create a mountain range, you also create ideal conditions for erosion. And so as these rocks get eroded, they would actually be deposited in this basin uh, adjacent to the mountain belt called a Foreland Basin. And we can see here, what I've tried to draw here is like, uh, the circles represent like the gravels, the big stuff. And then as you get further away from the mountains, the grain size decreases to sand and then to mud. So the Echo Canyon conglomerate represents these big gravels and near mountain deposits that were shed off the mountains by these rivers and energetic streams um, moving from the severe mountains here to, to the east. And then further east, if we were to head into uh, Colorado and Wyoming, during the Cretaceous, the entire 
uh, interior of Western North America was flooded by the ocean, and that's the Cretaceous Interior Seaway. So just sort of a, a cross section here to kind of show things how they would have looked. Um, so we've got some, we're gonna do some rock climbing here, but we've got some anchors here at the bottom. Um, and we can, again, see the, the nature of this thing. It's kind of massive. It's kind of hard to see bedding, although if you look, a little hard to see in the shadows there, but uh, there's some crude bedding. The beds are kind of dipping to the north a little bit, um, but more or less massive, poorly sorted. There's one of the anchors for the bottom, but we can see a big uh, sandstone clasp right there. There's actually almost like a, a meter sized particle still wedged in the rock there. And then a lot of places, the way these kind of hollow out into caves is some of these softer sort of sandy horizons there. We can see again another sharp contrast right here between more small gravels and then larger cobbles above. So this indicates a, again a more energetic depositional vent where bigger floods or higher energy rivers were depositing larger gravels um, here. A lot of these particles here in here are quartzites and quartzites are really hard resistant rocks and these would have been shed off the um, the mountains to the to the west. A lot of the rocks that were pushed up and folded uh, by the severe orogeny had a lot of quartzites in them. So these would have all been shed off from the west to the east during the Cretaceous about 80 to 100 million years ago. Uh, and you can see the conglomerate just going up and maybe another 60, 80 feet up the cliff. And I think regionally, the Echo Canyon conglomerate's as thick as, um, I think like several thousand feet, maybe like four or 5,000 feet, something like that. Nice big quartzite boulder here that's actually serving as an anchor. Uh, the trail up here kind of drops off steeply. And so what the route developers have done here is put in uh, bolts and chains for the belayers to anchor into so they don't uh, slip and fall off the side. And then you can see the lead bolts here uh, for the climbs going up. So we're gonna do some rock climbing here, but I thought I'd take a minute and share uh, some of the cool geology here at Echo Canyon. Little noisy place, the freeway rushing by. We just had a train come by earlier, but pretty amazing rock with a really cool story of this, uh, of the folding and thrusting of these rocks, the mountains that were created, and then ultimately these sediments, these coarse gravel and cobble sediments that were shed off of those highlands uh, during the Cretaceous time. So that's all for now here at the Echo Canyon conglomerate.